This casting is a really interesting matchbox release. It's the brown sugar. You see it has a Roman numeral 7 on it from the limited edition Roman numerals group of 10 super fast models. Apparently it was released only in the US and it's based upon the Dodge Charger. Uh, on the base, you might have seen that it was copyright 1972, but apparently the brown sugar came out in 78. In 72, it was released as the Big Banger and later became the Cosmic Blues. Now, I've shown several of these castings recently in a video. For whatever reason, I had decided I wanted to restore the brown sugar first. And so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm trying to do as good of a restoration as I can for this poor little thing that's kind of beat to hell and, you know, it was missing the engine. It was missing the livery on the sides. It, yeah. Now that is a muscle machines engine. There's a Cosmic Blues casting. I'm going to take the engine from the Cosmic Blues. And you see the front bumper is all screwed up on the original uh, brown sugar. So I need to replace the bumper, replace the center plastic section from another casting. I'm taking the scoop off this Muscle Machines casting. This Muscle Machines engine scoop Oddly enough, it seems virtually perfect for this. I have to, I do drill one hole a little bit bigger and cut off one of those pins, but I'll be darned if that scoop isn't like almost identical. An interesting thing on the brown sugar, the one I'm recreating, there's a whole bunch of these, there's a bunch of brown sugar variations out there. Here you see me drawing out the Cosmic Blues uh, because I want to take that engine. Um, there's all like, I think I've seen like six different variations running around out there at least of the brown sugar. The one I'm doing here has blue glass. And from what I could find, the ones that had blue glass had a black scoop on the engine. So, even though it's nicely chromed, I end up painting that black. Here I'm using the straight edge X-Acto blade to cut off the bottom of that engine. The engine's plastic, <laughs> in case you hadn't guessed. Uh, but the engine's plastic, and I do draw out those two little pins in the top, where the pins were that broke off that held the original scoop. Here I took the center plastic section off yet another casting I have laying around. It's like when you go to do these things, it's handy having, if they're all beat to hell, it's handy having a bunch of beat to hell castings to work from because hopefully one of them will have the parts you need. There you see the brown sugar body stripped down. I do have to file down the posts kind of well more than I thought I would have had to, to get that back to fit snugly. It just wasn't fitting tightly. And it's because of the metal to the sides of the post. And it's just the way it was originally done. I didn't like that look. I wanted it to fit snugly. So I did, you know, a little filing, not a lot. But once I had a snug fit back there, I knew I'd be a lot happier than having some kind of gap. And so, yeah, I also did this before drilling it. And, yeah, it took a little work to get there. As you can see, <laughs> I didn't want to take too much. And, uh, you know, I, I'm still at it. Jeez, it took, I didn't remember it taking this long. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing about being old and having your memory fade. It's like, oh, I don't remember putting that much work into that. But I finally got it where I wanted it. <laughs> There you see how it ended up. A nice fit. It's a, it uh, only has the one post at the back and then the front end hooks on it. There's the engine chunk and the center plastic section 
both of which I'm throwing in super clean to strip the chrome off of. Nice fresh batch of super clean, I might add. I uh, just picked up another gallon at Walmart in, in the auto section. I think it's like 10 bucks or 12 bucks. This stuff lasts forever. Um, I, I finally finished off the first gallon that I bought easily four years ago, like right when I first started out. Drilled, drilled uh, out that back post and I used self-tapping screw for it on this build. And I realized I was getting low on self-tapping screws, so I ordered some of those off Amazon. I did need to clean up the body a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't really damaged from play wear, but there were some casting lines and so, you know, some little indentations and stuff here and there. So I cleaned it up as much as I could. I didn't want to get too carried away. It's like when I'm doing restorations like this, I'm not going for perfection, say better than what the original casting was. Like if there's, I'm not going to use putty and stuff to fill things in, but I will file them down. And, you know, if there's a dent that was made from play, I'd use putty or something to fill it in. But if it's just an original casting, you know, indentation of some kind, yeah, I'm going to let that slide. So I get it cleaned up pretty well. And uh, this is sped up <laughs> five times normal speed. It's really handy to have a group of files. I have a wide selection of files that I've picked up inexpensively off of Amazon over the years. Lord knows how many files I have in the file drawer. But uh, it seems like I always go back to at least two or three for most builds. But it's really handy having different curves on the files to help you do different areas. Now the body and the base are metal. And here you see they've been stripped down. They're, I'm getting them ready for paint by throwing them in the IPA, which I like to use. You know, I, just, I think I just drop the body in there and then I start cleaning the base. Yeah, there we go. Um, so I dip them in the IPA and then I use a, one of the blue paper towels, the blue shop paper towels. Um, they're theoretically more lint free. <laughs> and uh, I use those to get the body ready for paint, wipe off any, uh, any grease or anything like that so that the body's as clean as possible. To paint, I ended up using the Color Shot paints again, and I used the white primer from Color Shot. I used brownie points, brown, and then went over it once the decals are on with that clear sealer. I'm thrilled with these paints, to be honest with you. Um, there's the engine after it's been stripped off. Interestingly, there was, there was gold under the chrome, and you can see some remnants of that gold that didn't come completely off. But uh, the engine's pretty good at that point. I needed to make that back hole for a post a little bit larger, cut the post off that muscle machine scoop on the front, had to file down the remainder of that post to get it nice and smooth. The sad part is, you know, as nicely chromed as that scoop is, like I mentioned before, this particular version of the Big Banger has a black hood scoop. <laughs> so. I end up shooting that with the black rattle can uh, lacquer. But it, it looked pretty good. I was really happy with that. The glass, there you see the blue glass and there is a roughish spot on the front that it wasn't something that needed to be sanded. I knew I could get it out with flits and you won't see all of the flits I do here. But you see me doing it using my finger and I'll do that a lot. I've been asked, about this multiple times. Why don't you just use the Dremel tool to do it? One, I've had bad experiences with the Dremel tool and plastic. And so doing it this way, I have a lot more control over what I'm doing. I don't have to worry about a wheel somehow catching. If there's a little crack in the glass or an imperfection, 
I don't have to worry about it catching it and breaking it. I don't have to worry about burning the glass. Again, it's plastic. You know, when I say glass, it's plastic. I don't have to worry about burning the plastic. I just take my time. I'm not in a super rush. And, um, you know, it, it works for me. Then it was gauzy, gauzy, gauzy time. I did get that glass looking really good using, you know, my finger and microfiber cloth <laughs> to polish it. And you'll see here in a second when I go to dip it in the gauzy, it's looking pretty good. And again, that's just flits. That's not sanding it because it didn't have the kind of wear that I felt needed sanding. And the gauzy also really helps with this kind of thing. So threw it in the gauzy and, uh, you know, wick off the excess and set that aside to dry. I love those little crayon box containers. I, I can't get enough of those. The decals. I ordered the brown sugar decals off of eBay. And uh, as I recall, they came from England. I ordered uh, brown sugar and I don't recall what the other one was. It might have been uh, for the Big Banger. Uh, but I did order another Cosmic Blues type based decal to use on another build that I have no idea when I'll do. <laughs> After doing this one, and uh, with the frustration I have with super fast wheels, they never look good to me. When I do a restoration with them, I'm just never happy with the wheels on a super fast. Um, I'm definitely going to do a custom of one of these because I love this Dodge based build and uh, this Dodge based casting. It's just, you know, it's apparently based on like the 1968, I think it is Dodge Charger. And yeah, I've, I've always loved Chargers and Challengers. And so, you know, this, this is something I really liked. I did re-chrome the plastic um, using the chrome pen. There you see the scoop has been painted black as well at this point. And it's just a matter, I didn't glue it in. It was a nice snug fit because it has the long post. Then I threw that onto the body. I did end up using washers because the size of those posts, the plastic posts on the engine, the heads of the screws weren't big enough to fill all the metal holes. So that engine would have just popped right back out. We're having the, end, the washers handy is a godsend for this kind of thing. It just gives you a little more area. And, you know, for the few bucks it costs to get a hundred of them and have them sitting around for whenever you need them, it's definitely worth it. You know, there's, there's things that I've bought in this hobby that I'll spend five or $10 and I'm still using those parts, you know, four years later. <laughs> And if you think, well, that was a stupid purchase. Why'd you get them originally? You know, you may think that early on until you need them. And it's like, oh yeah, I, it, remembering that you have them is the best part. You know, I always keep them with the screws. And so they're always handy. But uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out. You know, then I put the wheels on the base. The super fast pit wheels. <laughs> And I did kind of re-chrome them. And then they were like too chromey. So then I deadened them a little because they looked obnoxiously chromey. So anyhow, they are what they are. Uh, here I glue the plastic center section to the metal base. The metal base you do see is painted uh, white. That I didn't use the color shop paint on that. I, I Oddly enough, I didn't have white color shop paint. So I just used white lacquer that I had. I don't know why I didn't put the glass in before the engine, <laughs> which would have been the smart thing to do, but why do that? Once the glass popped into place, and it did pop over that center post, 
I mean, it's a nice fit. Even it was knocked loose. I don't know if you could tell in the original uh, when I before I started working on it, but it was knocked ever so slightly out of place originally. And uh, reinstalling it, I didn't have to draw it out to get it out. It just it was loose. Uh, but then it popped right back into place. I apologize for some of this being off camera. I'm having I'm having some issues. <laughs> the camera that I use for these overhead shots is easily 10 years old, long before I started this hobby. And uh, it's just a point and shoot. And uh, I think it's it's getting to the end of its life because it's doing some things really oddly. So there you see the original brown sugar. And uh, yeah, it's a little beat up. <laughs> it's a cool looking car, you know? It's just, it has also, you can see where the muscle machines like stole some ideas. Especially like the way the scoop works perfectly on this. So there you see where it was. And, here you see where it is now. It's definitely a lighter brown, but oddly enough, in the variations of brown sugar that I've seen out there, there's darker ones, there's lighter ones, there's reddish ones. So there was apparently some variation in the process when they were making these. But uh, I hope you like it. I'm pretty happy with it. You know, it, it it's fun. <laughs> you just gotta love brown sugar with the berries. <laughs> the berries and the exhaust puff out the back as it's heading. I don't know if you noticed that on the decal. There's some glamour shots coming up here. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm really happy with this build. I hope you like it too. So everyone, Thank you for watching these videos. Stay safe and healthy out there. I'll catch you in the next one.